You might be wondering. Now turn left and then immediately turn right. What does it feel like living day to day with uh, the AQC? The answer now, is right. very pleasant. Very, very pleasant. I think the biggest event investment is acquiring the car in the first place. Uh, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, option you chose to buy it. Whether it's leasing it or getting a loan now to get it or even buying it outright. You start to wonder, is it the best investment of my cash? So it doesn't really matter how you acquire the car. Even if it's a company car, you're still paying for it one way or the other. So it's not cheap. I think it's, the, it's, just, the, it's just the passion. Or it's just, the, it's just the, the, maybe the test. Your test or your, your preferences. Because you feel like you could afford it. But the thing is that living with it, fantastic. Once you've, you once have purchased it. If you've purchased it, you have in your drive, just install a, a charging point. Make sure you get a very nice uh, electric deal. You have to shop around to, to get the, the, second exit of the, roundabout. the best deal. I think in the UK today, maybe Octopus. Octopus is the, is the best deal possible. I'm not on Octopus. Uh, I just want to make sure that I know where I'm going here. Where am I going? Yeah, the second one, okay. Now exit the roundabout. So the octopus the roundabout will give you about 4.5 pounds. Now take the second exit of the roundabout. Give you about 45 pounds uh, per kilo hour. And that is uh, mind now blowing. Now the first exit of the roundabout. Do you know why? Prepare to go straight. <laughs> because that's super cheap. But they only do that between maybe midnight and 5 a.m. So you have to have a good charging app to be able to schedule your, your charging time. Otherwise, you'll be waking up, disrupting your own sleep. And it, it eventually, it's going to take its toll on you. So the thing is that... Ooh, that was uh, close. So it's going to take its toll on you, and before you know One it, mile, straight onto A three zero one five towards. Before you know it, you, you don't even you're not even benefiting from the from the tariff because your health is not good. You're performing poorly at work because you're waking up every day to charge your car because you don't want to get charged for extra <laughs> five pence or so. So sometimes it's not worth it. So you get charged a little bit higher. Now during the straight. during the uh, peak times, in other words, the time uh, that's the times outside of your uh, zone of your cheap uh, off-peak charging zone. So you get charged for about eighteen pence in, in the yards, in the United right Kingdom for the octopus services tariff. But I am on the EDF tariff. And they have they have a, a peak time as well, but somehow they've put me on this tariff now that it doesn't matter when I charge, I'll pay fourteen pence. To be honest, that works better for me. I don't want to be watching my time because it's just in and out, in and out. You know, my wife uses this car. You know, I just want to charge up any time I want to charge. So paying a little bit extra, but a flat rate throughout the day, 14 pence. Uh, I can't mourn about that. I think that works better for my lifestyle. But the main challenge is when you're traveling. If you, if you travel a lot, if you get this car for 
uh, a work car and you're going to put a lot of mileage on it so that means that you are going to, you're going to be charging at charging stations uh, on the service stations and and you know welcome breaks when you when you are when you when you're sitting down there or you when you're stopping to 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 eat something or to rest but that is when electrification becomes very expensive electrification becomes expensive because you know middle men middle companies are making money so they are charging us extortionate rates uh, to charge our car on demand so I think if you're lucky 30 pounds per kilowatt hour uh, the average is 40 pounds but if you get one of those uh, ionity uh, charging fast charging points it, you could pay up to 69 pence and now to me that is that is suicidal now when you start to pay 69 pence per kilowatt hour you can as well do, you know just just ditch your, your electric car go and get a lovely nice fuel fossil fuel economy car because you are better off So I think things things need to be improved. You know, every every now and then you get some free charging. In some hotels, in very few hotels, uh, they will let you charge for free. I remember that some hotels I stay I stayed at in um, Scotland during some of our holiday trips. And you're allowed to charge for free 50, 50 kilowatts uh, per hour speed, which is fantastic. But many people will charge you. They will charge you and charge you more. So um, it's it's still, you know, it's still expensive to to run to run an electric car because I think it should be cheaper. There should be considerably big distances between how much you could have spent if you went on your diesel or petrol car to the same trip compared to if you, if you went on your electric car. So the gaps are not that massive; they are very close because you know because of the uh, public charging tariffs that are very high. So that's a conundrum. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to save enough money to make up for the the price of the car because the car is very expensive. I just bought this car because <laughs> you know I love to do my own part with the with the environment. Now and because it's Mercedes, and you know I just instead of going and buy another, you know another uh, diesel or petrol car I just thought maybe I should make a switch now basically is the preference is the preference so don't buy it because you want to save money especially if you want to buy luxury luxury um, uh, EVs but it's more reasonable if you go for the cheaper EVs there's some that that cost less than the half of this price, um, so they might not be one of the branded cars, one of the top top luxury cars like like Jaguars, like like Mercedes, or even like um, like uh, BMW. I'm sorry. Can you say that again, please? Cancel. So, if your taste is not gone crazy, <laughs> you can tell my taste has gone crazy. A little bit, not too much. Uh, you might just want to find yourself an electric car 
that is within budget. I think those those budget that recurs will make more financial sense. I remember and I remember speaking to uh, a taxi taxi driver. Actually, it came to me at the train station car park because he saw me driving in the Mercedes. So, and he was driving a new version of Kia. Is it Kona? Kia Kona, very small car like that. But it delivers more than 300 miles of range. And it's super cheap, a lot cheaper to, to buy. And it's a taxi driver. And it's telling me, I think it makes sense that I go for this car. When I told him how much the, he asked me actually how much the, the EQC 400 cost. When I told him the price, he opened his mouth. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Then when I told him about the range, it wasn't, it wasn't that impressed. <laughs> so the range, you know, maybe sometimes if you go crazy, 200, 210, 120, if you drive sensibly, you could get to around 40. I've done to around 60, 70 or 80 before, to around 80, but that's not a realistic day-to-day -day driving experience. So for that guy, he just lives locally. He charges it up. He doesn't use public charging facilities because before he finishes shift, uh, he, I don't think he will use 300 miles finishing his shift. Then he will go and plug it in again at home. Then maybe later on it will come out. So it's always topping up. It's never run out of, of, of range. So for a condition like that, uh, you are winning, basically. So basically, I'm just driving the AQC to, start, to satisfy my own, own passion and desires. Possibly I just want to enjoy my life, you know. Of course, because I could afford it a little bit. If I can't, if there's no opportunity to be able to drive this now, I'll probably go for uh, a cheaper electric car. Uh, if I really want to drive an electric car. So that is the, the de decision you have to make. With regards to level 1.8, it's very comfortable. Uh, it's well insulated, the cabin is, is a nice place to be. Uh, you won't regret it. I've had a couple of issues with regards to uh, some few things. If you've been w watching my videos, there's a particular noise uh, on just on top of the driver's side right here. Now I'm doing 70 miles an hour right now. I can hear it. I can't. But sometimes when it's very, when it's very windy, I can hear, hear the rattling. Now I've booked that in at the main Mercedes dealership and they've given me the date. So the date is a bit long away because they wanted to give me a long car. And so I think it's next week. I've been waiting for about maybe a month now. Uh, if I didn't want a long car, a long car, perhaps they would have scheduled my appointment uh, earlier on, uh, earlier than this one that I got. So they're going to fix it. They found what happened. They've ordered the parts. They, they called me up. Uh, the parts has arrived. But that was the reason why it took about a month. They said it would take a while for the part, the part to be arrived, to, to, to arrive. So last week they called me up. The part has arrived. We booked it in in the next couple of weeks. I think it's going to be next week now. So that will be sorted out. But what I've noticed recently was that when I engaged the reverse uh, gear usually this car has the reverse parking so that the camera reverse camera is supposed to engage that which has been working perfectly for the last seven seven months that I've had the car for but just recently when I engaged the parking uh, uh, parking gear the camera I hear the camera uh, cover hope open at the back but it doesn't show anything. It just shows like a spanner. A spanner 
icon. I think something is broken somewhere. But when I first noticed it, I took my 13-year-old boy and his friend for shopping. And they were messing about with around the car and open, they were opening the, the boots. So I don't know whether I did something. I've not asked him about this. I know what's going to tell me, no, I didn't do anything. So I don't want to blame him for that. But I've checked the physical camera, nothing was broken there. It seems like there's a disconnectivity in the electronics. So I've not booked that in, but because it's going in anyway uh, next week, I intend to mention it to the main dealership to sort that out. Apart from that, Trust me, now I've been driving for a long now. Maybe for about 30 minutes, speaking to you for about 30 minutes. You know, it's, you can drive for, for hours and still come out of this car in good shape. Well insulated. And the car keeps, as they update the MBUA system, it's like they are retaining this car. To so believe me, that's how I feel. Anytime there's a big update, the car behaves differently and the better in it behaves better i think it's a lot better on corners the steering is more responsive you know it, you know where the when the front wheels are all the time and it's well balanced well, well tuned and the sitting arrangement is great the car is you know very comfortable to drive the steering wheel the visibility, even um, driving this car around town, you don't think you are, you don't feel like you're driving a, a huge truck around, you can get into small spaces. And, and it's just fantastic. My wife loves it. Uh, so she's been driving it more and more. So, what's the verdict? Living with this car, fantastic. Apart from the price, I think it's expensive. Um, but it's Mercedes. That's what you that you that's what you pay for. Now the MBUA system is okay, but you have to get used to the you have to get used to the controls. I was I, I got used to it when I was driving a lot, but since, I, since I've, been, I've been driving our second car, when I came back here, I had to I had to how to you know reacclimatize again which is a bit of a bit annoying because i've been driving the audi a7 that has a different infotainment system but you know it's not like a tesla big ipad but it's huge and maybe it's it's more ad adaptable and it's very big but this is it's it's very very you know, efficient at what it does, but it's not that big. Uh, the the um, satellite, sorry, the the navigation system is good, but it gets you. You need to get used to it. Um, you need to get used to that, which you know is adequate. I think I like it. Uh, however. You know, you might say that if you drive a Tesla because of a huge iPad in front of you, you have more flexibility, you have more possibility for other things. Uh, but this is this this is static. Of course, it's uh, you know you can touch it, you can expand the navigation. Uh, you have this lovely uh, touch sensitive part here that helps you to move things along nicely and smoothly. Okay, and it's just just like the normal Mercedes, your key buttons are there, which is something I love. I don't want virtual cockpit that doesn't have any button. I think it's too stressful. Uh, we are we are tactile beings. We love to touch. We don't want to touch other people. You want to touch something around you. You want to feel something. So I think that's part of the ownership experience to be able to have some real life buttons uh, to price. So 
with that i like the way things are laid out your shortcut buttons are constantly are constantly there you don't have to mess around with the touch screen or what, what have you um, so that is that you know i've test driven the tesla it's a nice car but sorry it's not for me for now you know, you, you know the the level of comfort between Model Three, Model X, nice. Uh, the 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 comfort between Model th Model Three and uh, the EQC is a night and day. Even the Model Model X, you cannot compare the comfort of the scale with Model, model X. So even though it's a lot expensive. But it's it's to your taste. It's based on your taste. These are these are great cars. And just for me, I prefer Mercedes. So what do you think? I'd like to hear from you about if you about what you think. If you drive an EV how is living with your EV? Do you drive a Tesla? Have you test driven an EQC? What's your thought about you know the overall charging experience? If you drive a Tesla, perhaps you have more possibilities. But I've traveled long enough to realize that Tesla owners are very eager to use other public charging facilities because they have been disappointed as well. And I heard that uh, Elon Musk is going to open up the the Tesla fast charging facilities for the general public. Maybe that's happened in some parts of Europe, but not in the UK yet. Maybe maybe I'm not aware yet. Perhaps that will work better or help us to navigate our networks of roads better so interesting so it's well article uh, I've just done about um, 22 miles now while I've been talking to you so my overall range is down to 192 so thanks for the company if you've watched if you've watched this uh, video this far, thank, thanks for the co company. I appreciate that. Please subscribe and like this. And all the very best. All the very best.